today I am going to talk about uh, the provisions of, uh, that is, the market provision of uh, public good. Uh, normally, uh, it is a part of the allocation issue. That is uh, why uh, public good is primarily exists and uh, who is going to allocate public good, etc. Uh, are the question normally been uh, mooted by many economists uh, and of course uh, there is a lot of debate in that and the question of uh, allocation of resource come from when uh, it is actually a matter of a point a, a, pro, a portions of productive asset among different uses and uh, resource allocation arises as an issue because the resources of the society are normally in an economic sense is a scarce resource that is limited whereas the you know, wants of the individual or the need of individuals are unlimited. So this dichotomous uh, understanding is in fact poses the question of allocation in that uh, context and uh, there in that context only we discuss about uh, the importance of uh, allocation. Uh, per se and uh, in, in a free entrepreneurial or system enterprise system the price system is the primary mechanism through which resources are distributed among the uses that is most desired or the least desired by the individual in that context and in a planned economy where this is actually been done by the public sector the government themselves and that so so whereas a mixed economy it is actually a combination of this process of basically government allocating as well as the price mechanism find its own merit in that sense of uh, where to be uh, the resources spent or uh, allocated for production, consumption, etc. So in that sense, a mixed economy is, is, is what is actually normally we can see around the world. And though many people try to say that many things are planned and totalitarian kind of thing but still the importance of the cooperation of market is inevitable as well as uh, the other thing even if we say that market is actually uh, allocate everything the inevitability of the given mentality and the resource uh, allocation in many forms is part and parcel of the even free market economy in that sense so uh, even the Adam Smithian concept of uh, 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 the the provision of or the government's role uh, basically uh, to minimize uh, in the in the uh, in the realms of uh, uh, governance but that they itself need a lot of uh, resources and that uh, major portion for example in the modern sense uh, the the defense and the police and other uh, internal sort of an expenditure comes around some 20 percent of uh, GDP 25 25 20 25 percent of the GDP that is one quarter of the uh, total GDP is maybe possibly being spent in that context so if that is the case uh, then the importance of the G is as Kane said is very very important therefore the fiscal uh, intervention of the government uh, in terms of providing public good is also man uh, you know uh, rationalized so with that let me talk about actually the importance and relevance of the uh, provisions of resource allocation in a in a voluntary exchange theory model all right we this is actually uh, majorly being contributed by three eminent economists so this is in a framework of market not a uh, purely government that is even the government spending is actually uh, taking the coup from uh, the market understanding or the framework of the market in that sense that is what is actually the kind of uh, framework which we are dealing with uh, and uh, uh, three important uh, people in fact or personalities in fact contributed much on this is uh, all of you are aware of that is Professor Samuelson, uh, Richard Musgrave, and uh, uh, book, James Buchanan. And we know that actually the contribution of uh, Samuelson gave us a first rigorous derivation of the optimum condition for public good supply. And we know that is actually, I have already discussed in the lectures, previous lectures, and all. 
and to my grief we owe our appreciation basically uh, to understand the lindens uh, pioneering contribution and the stimulating general analysis of the social want in the theory of public finance textbook which is one of the primary textbook reading uh, for the course also so uh, in that context you can actually see uh, the contribution of uh, samuelson and uh, uh, musgrave and uh, now there comes the importance of buchanan has now provided us with a first systematic understanding of uh, this particular aspect of uh, public good in a market uh, setting so indeed the only comparable attempt which we can have is with the lintel a uh, contribution in the earlier uh, i mean much uh, prior to this effort like uh, this is actually in 70s later 70s uh 50 years before like 1920s uh, before 1920s the contribution of lintel had given a prominence in the field and uh, a characteristics of the modern development has been the emphatic rejection of what uh, was described as the musgrave as the voluntary exchange theory of the public good pioneer notably by lintel and uh, in that context uh, the uh, as a, or by contrast uh, the cost the most striking feature of Buchanan's exposition is that the theory of public good is developed explicitly as so a voluntary exchange theory of the public economy. So this is actually the contrast between uh, what is Musgrave was trying to articulate as well as the Buchanan's contribution. That is, Buchanan largely say that it is actually because of the voluntary exchange uh, exchange makes uh, the public good provision essential, whereas uh, uh, Musgrave says that it, the, the voluntarity is uh, non existential it is actually the government and the uh, the deliberate action of the state is actually important to uh, the uh, important to have the public uh, the provision of public good in that sense so uh, a, a broader outline therefore uh, for buchanan's procedure need to be understood so uh, in order to understand that let us look into the details of uh, what uh, buchanan tried to articulate in his uh, work basically uh, what he had done is uh, there are different categorization of the provisions how people had or people want to make uh, the first essential thing is that uh, you know in a two person uh, model he was trying to put and uh, articulate how the voluntary exchange model so uh, the analysis of public good equilibrium under voluntary exchange between two parties plays an important role uh therefore uh, in buchanan let us look into the details of it the provision of a pure public good in a, in a highly simplified world of a world of equals are the primary setting uh, factor to understand uh, the 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 uh, framework of voluntary exchange model in that the constant opportunity cost is assumed uh, throughout the discussion under the independent adjust uh, adjustment he showed that each person will equate his own marginal rate of substitution to his marginal rate of transformation so we have already say, uh, seen in the exchange model theory that the substitution and the transformation a parallel by using the edgeworth box diagram in a microeconomic context so same is actually the kind of model which he is trying to inc incorporate in his uh, understanding and this will not however represent an equilibrium situation on a contrary what he says that it is not actually an equilibrium since for a public good each person will place some value on the other activity introduced in the public good the production of a public good generates pareto relevant external economy uh, both persons may therefore gain from exchange agreement uh, to extend public good production gains from trade are fully exhausted only when the summed up marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation in that sense so uh, for buchanan uh, the model serves to expose the basic motivation for voluntary agreement Uh, to public good uh, supply, that is the existence of potential gains from trade in that sense. Now he deliberately treats the question as to how trade takes place in a in a rather uh, uh, perfunctory niche uh, fashion. That is, assuming a very problem of strategic behavior and implicitly assuming that unit of public good are traded 
uh, traded uh, in in, in a, a, a seriatim or what you call he conclude that the equilibrium will be reached when gains from trade are exhausted in that sense so that is uh, the, the, the it is very important to note the Samuelson's condition that is your summation of margin rate to substitution which is equal to MT transformation uh, that is uh, are therefore derived as condition for public good equilibrium in a small number voluntary exchange model rather than in a condition for Pareto efficiency in a welfare context. So this is actually one of the model, uh, one of the primary observation or theoretical proposition, in fact, uh, had by uh, Buchanan in his book. And this analysis further, big, again, understood in terms of the assumption of a world of equals, uh, which is relaxed. Okay, now in the original model starts with the equals proposition. Now, once you have the the idea of uh, MRS which is equal to MT uh, to see that there is a sort of uh, equilibrium in a small number case uh, you can actually now uh, compromise uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, what you called the, the 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 equals nature or the perfectness of the the individual uh, in that sense so once you relax this retaining the crucial implicit assumption that units of public good are traded successively and incrementally, Buchanan show that in contrast to familiar competitive private uh, goods trade, public goods trade generates different marginal price to the 2%, uh, two percent, which is actually, it is of course in a model of 2% exchange. And in spite of their differing marginal equations, both person must be bought into equilibrium at the same level of public good consumption and that. So, so a set of differential marginal price equals to the marginal evaluation for each person is therefore being required in that context. So Buchanan also emphasizes the uh, further difference from competitive private good trade that equilibrium no longer requires uniformity of marginal prices over a quantity and purchased by a single person in that sense. So, unless the arbitrary assumption of a marginal price uniformity is made, ordinary demand schedule cannot be derived from the preface, uh, preference function and initial endowment to determine a unique equilibrium in that context. So, the position of the equilibrium will depend, hence, uh, upon the prices uh, or price, uh, the, the precise way in which prices vary over the unit successively exchanged which determine how the gain from trade on inframarginal units will be distributed among the, 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 uh, the uh, people. And since this cannot be predicted, public good equilibrium exhibits an undeterminacy which is absent in the familiar case of competitive trade in private, uh, in a private good. So this is the most important point one can refer or uh, one can infer from the public good understanding of a book and that is this the the the, 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 the predictability uh, that is public good equilibrium exhibit an indeterminacy which is absent in the familiar case of competitive trade in private good so now if this is actually the case then uh, in contrast with many other finding uh, the assumptions of the constant cost share over quantity for each party in his celebrated model, Buchanan, in fact, discusses this case in the in the in the book, which is actually in the last portion of what he referring to. That is, but appear to overlook the problem emphasized by Linder per se. That is, in particular, method of bargaining envisaged. There is no mechanism to derive parties to the unique equilibrium at Linder's point. Uh, basically, that is one way of looking to the issue. That is, bargaining uh, would uh, cease at the public good quantity, where if you remember the Linter's uh, understanding of OX0, then uh, since the uh, uh, there is no further gain from trade to be realized within the price uniformity convention, uh, uh, what happens is that to achieve the public good output of OX1, it is evidently insufficient to abstract from strategic behavior. That is, uh, 
uh, it is also uh, a question of equal power in the specific sense of ability to exchange up to saturation which is required in this case very important to two uh, two percent case where this is actually uh, possible because uh, you have two individual and they are uh, in the first instance they are equals but in the second in instance uh, they were actually not equals but still the confirmity of private good is given but not in the public good case as uh, opposite of what uh, the other people said because the public good uh, thing is basically depends on the marginal rate of transformation which is equal to marginal rate of substitution so this is what is actually the kind of thing which is makes the two individual to attain equilibrium uh, point in this particular understanding which is also inferred the idea from samuelson rather than the Peritian case which we normally apply in the two-party exchange model where the asymmetry or the externality was completely silent in that uh, context. So here this is actually creates a sort of a si externality because uh, it is uh, inflict, this is actually been captured through the existence of public good where the question of uh, uh, the price is a very different one where the marginal rate of substitution with that of the transformation is very, very importantly being understood in the case uh, as uh, formally placed by Sam Wilson. All right. So uh, in the traditional voluntary re exchange required, a requirement of a differential marginal price equals the marginal evaluation for each person is no longer necessary, therefore, in this case. Uh, with thus, uh, for example, uh, 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 thus, uh, the two party might bargain simultaneously over the two variable public good quantity and the unit price and achieve an agreement which exhausts all gains from trade but involves no quality of marginal evaluation and marginal price in any meaningful sense. So, the marginality criteria has been basically uh, relaxed but the marginal substitution between the products by the two individuals are going to be uh, the key and uh, mm, uh, that is what is actually the difference which uh, they are trying to articulate in a voluntary exchange uh, premise in that context. Now uh, if uh, in the case of pure public good uh, the joint supply hold in the special sense that all person uh, in the relevant group are jointly supplied with the equal quantities of homogeneous quality consumption services. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a few if any services could satisfy this polar requirement but the joint supply concept can readily be generalized as Buchanan himself had already demonstrated in detail in earlier uh, paper which we had uh, this, um, we, we, we had referred from the beginning so uh, even in the in even a pure uh, private good such as bread can be treated as a special case of joint supply by uh, treating my consumption of bread as a service available to all. Even here, Samuel Sonian requirement of uh, the total marginal rate of substitution that is sigma MRS is equal to MT still holds as an equilibrium condition, though all marginal rate of substitution except my own are zero in this case. So, in, in the general case, the input unit for a public good will provide individual with the differing service quantities, some of which may be zero or varying quality. Example, the fire protection received from the, a fire station or fixed location is, can be attributed in that context. So, moreover, the proportion uh, enjoyed by different individuals will be vari variable rather than fixed. That, uh, 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 that is, as an example, you can say that the location of the fire station can be varied, but uh, not the outcome in that context. So, Buchanan explore the, uh, uh, explores the, the condition for equilibrium required in, in the later case. But in contrast to his previous cited paper, he provided no firm, that is, uh, joint supply externality and optimality paper uh, statement of the condition uh, for the two persons case. That is what is actually he tried to articulate, and uh, he's 
uh, he's also correctly observed that most of the traditional example of public good externality, such as uh, defense or uh, are of Sitowski's production consumption variety, though as he shows, it is easy to provide important examples of the consumption uh, consumption variety uh, from such areas as health and education. All right. So now, uh, if this is actually the case, then all external diseconomies would uh, therefore seem somewhat arbitrarily and unrealistically to be ruled out. That is, cases in which the services to different persons are quite different in nature as distinct from quantity or quality are also implicitly ruled out. Although from an analytical point of view, this distinction too seems rather arbitrary. This is nevertheless the criteria what most public good theorists have probably had in mind. This is actually a kind of uh, critique one can possibly place and pollution cases would fail to qualify as public good externality on both grounds in that context. So, but still uh, as a theoretical understanding, this is also having its own uh, merit. And uh, let us look into the uh, many person model, uh, how that is going to change. If it is a two course per person case, this is in fact a bit uh, 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 stable, but uh, what is going to happen with the multi percent uh, model? So, uh, in this, uh, the contention has been severely criticized by many, Musgrave, notably Musgrave, and uh, this criticism is accepted. Now, let us look into the details of it. And, uh, uh, that is, the argument is very simple. When new, uh, the numbers are large, any single individual recognizes that public good supply is virtually independent, both directly and indirectly through possible effect on the contribution of others. That is, of his own contribution to any voluntary exchange agreement. This is actually the most important point. And the consultation and interaction necessary to realize the available gains from trade in public good is not therefore forthcoming. Okay, consequently, little or nothing will be provided under purely voluntary exchange case. So as Buchanan emphasizes, such a failure to contribute reflects strictly independent behavior in contrast to strategic uh, withholding of contribution, which we should expect in the realistic small number setting as we have done early, I mean, uh, looked into the matter earlier. So uh, there appears therefore be a striking difference in the result of a voluntary exchange as between small and large number of models. So Buchanan's main contain, uh, um, main, uh, main point that is, uh, uh, main point uh, that is Buchanan uh, maintains that uh, it is only the large number model which is relevant for public good analysis not this small because small can be immediately uh, as we have seen that boils down to the case of the pure exchange model and uh, though uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, technicality has changed that is margin rate of substitution with that of the mar tra tra transformation case uh, of the Peritian kind and the Samuelson's kind is basically uh, having very thin Different. So this seems reasonable for a pure public. Therefore, uh, therefore, only the question comes that you know whether this is actually going to be uh, valid in the uh, you know uh, uh, distinctive one in the two-party case to that of a multi-party. Where Buchanan says the multi-party case is actually more important to deal with the sort of public good, and this seems reasonable for a pure public good which provides equal quantity of homogeneous quality consumption services to all persons without capacity limit. Buchanan, however, employs a generalized public good concept as developed in his own book and uh, especially in chapter 4, in which the number of persons jointly benefiting from particular production unit may be few, or in which the spillover benefit may be widely spread but the negligible amount, that is a small number of elements may therefore be considerably significant, significant uh, considerable significance uh, there. And in the more realistic institutional setting, 
it is even more evidently the case that as Max Gray pointed out that both small and large number of problems may exist side by side. It is only for the po polar case of pure or near pure public good in, in an op atomistic institutional setting that small number equilibrium analysis is completely irrelevant in that context. So one might therefore wonder whether Buchanan is really justified in his earlier analysis of small number voluntary exchange. So in explicit ignoring strategic behavior of problems, uh, that, that, there comes the issue. So if the large number of cases where the only one relevant in generalized public good analysis, the strategic aspect of small number interactions might well be regarded as irrelevant and hence ignored, as Buchanan argued. Indeed, uh, it would then be difficult to justify the whole voluntary exchange methodology of uh, small number bargaining which Buchanan adopts in uh, his early chapters. So that is in, in, in chapter 3 or 2, 3 and even 4 and the existence of the potential gain uh, from trade can be demonstrated uh, equally well in the large number of models and the equilibrium condition of the small number models are simply irrelevant because if that is the case then in the book uh, you can also have a contradicting case that is the second and third chapter uh, is uh, almost looks fuzzy there and in fact however both types of problems seems relevant and interesting public good theorist why because you know to uh, to understand uh, how does it start uh, uh, draw a distinction from the traditional uh, microeconomic perspective to just uh, inculcating or ar ar articulating the microeconomic logic uh, to the public economic realm where it has been uh, treated completely different uh, that it is a pure it is non a, a non uh, voluntary case to that of a voluntary case in that case, uh, in that instance so in that context he is trying to mainstreamizing the sort of uh, 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 the, the uh, whole understanding of public good, uh, which was essentially earlier being treated as actually uh, a, a provision of the uh, the third party, completely a third party. Now he is trying to basically build the model uh, in a two-party setting in that sense. So public good is again being treated as a two-party setting or multi-party, even if it is a multi-party, but the two-party exchange framework kind of thing. Or a voluntary, what normally we call it as a normal a voluntary exchange. So uh, Buchanan's criticism of Lindell type analysis are not therefore entirely justified from the first uh, two chapters point of view, that is uh, the point of view of uh, the two-person case. But at the, on the contrary, though, it uh, remains true, as others have pointed out, that Lindell's generalization to the large number of group is erroneous. So, uh, in that context, uh, the Samuelson's contribution, sorry, the Buchanan con uh, Buchanan's contribution makes some sort of an edge over the Lindell's approach. So, having shown that in the important case of large number of public good externality, the process of voluntary argument, sorry, uh, the voluntary agreement, uh, is quite incapable of realizing the value available gains from trade. Buchanan turns to the puzzling question as to why Wixell thought that the political analog of a voluntary exchange, namely a system of minority veto, could do better. This question is puzzling, not least uh, because of the fact that Buchanan himself regards uh, the two-person voluntary exchange model of his early chapter as equivalent to a two-person Wixelian uh, consensus uh, model. That is uh, uh, to say um, uh, uh, this is precisely how Lindell's formulation uh, formulates his own pioneering small number analysis known as a voluntary exchange model in a stricter sense but as a small number political system based on Wixelian consensus between homogeneous political grouping in this way we had hoped to be able to develop the embryonic positive analysis embedded of Excelian discussion and uh, why then this is actually a large number consensus system to be sharply distinguished from the large number voluntary exchange model is also a question which somebody has to pose where also we have a clear sort of an uh, you know explanation comes up from the part of Buchanan and that is Buchanan makes a truly ingenious attempt to rationalize the approximate consensus requirement in a large number model. But it seems clear that much of the 
argument applies almost equally well to a pure voluntary exchange system as we have seen in the micro foundation uh, uh, the microeconomics uh, literature the, the argument ultimately relies crucial on an alleged social psychological involvement the effect produced by possession of the veto uh, but this is uh, far from completely convincing that is uh, that is uh, the possession of the veto does not bring the individual into a true bargaining relationship with the rest of the community the consensus system could easily be degenerated into the sort of independent adjustment equilibrium predicted for the voluntary exchange model this is also equally important to keep in mind why because somebody vetoes then veto right is also essentially has to be part of the uh, the right which they are exercising then uh, even uh, if suppose that is majority veto right is majority whether you are going to withhold uh, no public good or public good is also a kind of so understanding which one has to keep in mind and this is particularly evident when it is remembered that vexels discussion that you, that mm. the use of veto cannot prevent the rest of the community from reaching a purely voluntary uh, voluntaristic agreement on some rejection proposal so the vexelian gap between consensus consensus and voluntary exchange thus remains largely inexplicable so uh, uh, this is actually a kind of uh, an interesting point one can uh, argue parallel with and uh, when you look into the political process which is in connection with the voluntary exchange uh, that uh, the large potential gains from public good trade in many person model will can which cannot be realized through purely voluntary exchange model institution as uh, the criticisms of the uh, earlier uh, the the the, uh, the uh, musgravian kind that is buchanan goes on to emphasize that the individual will have an incentive to propose institutional change which may be may enable such gains to be achieved uh, within the institution sorry within the uh, exchange model premise but uh, normally that is going to happen but uh, if you look after uh, uh, 50 years of this proposition there are so much of uh, institutional change had been brought out by the same so called market uh, interest and uh, made a lot of uh, changes in predicted inside and uh, it may be possible to agree on uh, coercive political institutions such as majority voting if not pixelian consensus as a change in trading rules which will effectively embrace and bind the potential dropouts under voluntary exchange now instead of actually you no know, uh, suppose we we believed earlier that uh, the the government is supposed to basically um, you know do the interest of uh, the uh, the mark uh, not serving the interest of the market but now what we have seen is that actually uh, the uh, governments are now completely uh, spending their energy to basically cater the interest of uh, corporations and the corporation uh, corporate interest through that the market interest so called the market interest in that sense so uh, where they have uh, by deliberation by policy they are actually uh, kind of uh, uh, you know uh, de entangling the provisions of public good in that sense so the very publicness of the public good is actually been uh, dismantled by the very uh, system which we earlier argued that the government is going to protect but the government is now de uh, entangling the very uh, provisions of public good in that context uh, which is also kind of uh, giving uh, the sort of an edge in the in the understanding of uh, this particular uh, way that is uh, uh, the, the it is actually giving room for the voluntary exchange kind of uh, premise uh, as uh, buchanan and many other had insisted or discussed about and to conclude what i feel is also equally important to understand the whole trajectory that is uh, the demand and supply of public good is an important new landmark uh, in the development of the theory of public good and the book uh, that is uh, the particularly the buchanan's understanding of the voluntary exchange through his book uh, is also try to incorporate uh, this demand supply that the marshallian framework uh, to see uh, how uh, provisions of public good can be bring insight 
uh, the uh, market mechanism where we have already said that the very existence of the public good is going to be uh, 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 going to result in the market failure but now that failure can be taken as actually an opportunity in this kind of understanding so as uh, as the foregoing discussion indicates it is possible to disagree with some significant details of analysis and emphasis but any possible ambiguity and inconsistencies are more than offset by important new insights more than any other fiscal theorist over the post war period in that sense so buchanan has helped us to view fiscal phenomena as uh, he himself puts it through a different window uh, therefore uh, this is very very relevant and uh, as a reference you can actually go through the book and uh, of buchanan uh, especially on the voluntary exchange uh, the exchange uh, model which he has proposed and also there are very interesting uh, observations um, and review articles if you have uh, uh, not gone through the book uh, you can actually also look into the uh, reviews of uh, economists uh, such as john head or you can also look into the details of uh, Uh, the book or the uh, articles the, uh, by Christian Bastian uh, I, that is also turned in the annals of public and cooperative economics journal so you can actually look into uh, that and again uh, uh, you can also look into different uh, reviews which if you uh, look into J, uh, JSTOR and you will get it and there are so many people who had basically uh, you know Uh, the critically evaluated the kind of merits of this book and uh, uh, i would uh, suggest all of you read the book uh, uh, if possible and uh, some of at least some of the chapters as a uh, relevant point which i have been mentioning in the lecture uh, with this let me stop thank you